would like to say good, good morning to everyone. Good morning. good morning. This is the Lord's Day, and we are happy. I hope everyone's happy to be here. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us be happy and rejoice in it. Amen. Our call to worship comes from the Gospel of Mark, first chapter, verses 1 through 3. Gospel of Mark, first chapter, verses 1 through 3. Gospel of Mark, first chapter, verses 1 through 3. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
morning. Good morning. A response to you can be found in Matthew, the 12th chapter. Matthew, the 12th chapter. There's no one you got to say amen. Thank you. 
Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We are so grateful to God for the privilege of coming together and we wish all to give God some praise for this choir. Amen. 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 Uh, let's uh, continue to uh, pray for all those persons who are sick and shut in. I too am glad to see Brother Dupree here today, and I want to publicly apologize to him. I think it was Janice called me and told me uh, he was uh, on his way from the hospital before I found out he was in the hospital, but they had to rush him back to the hospital, and uh, he was in the hospital. I don't know uh, if I ever called his name. I want to publicly apologize to him, but I'm so happy to see him here today. Stop praying for him, continue to pray for and with him, but we are indeed glad and happy to see him in the services today. Uh, we're praying for all those persons on our sick list. I saw Harold come in today, shot the hell out of me. Uh, good to see you, man, with your beautiful wife. We're going to uh, continue to pray for him. I thought about him because that's brother, uh, brother in law of my dear uh, brother Baker, so I wanted to. Celestia so Pratt, Brother Baker as well, uh, along with Sister Mary um, Johnson. Sister Johnson uh, received a visit from Sister Kim Hunt, and she informed me that Sister Johnson walked her back to her car. That's how good she was feeling. So that's what we're here about that. Too. And, uh, we are so thankful. Uh, you've heard about the uh, celebration on third Sunday in October. Uh, we're celebrating our uh, anniversary of the church 28 years. Of course, I tried to combine the two uh, services uh, so that people wouldn't have to try to give me an offering, a love offering in two different settings. Some of you have already uh, done that, so I don't feel obligated to do it again, but uh, we're all looking forward to that celebration. I, I'm excited, I'm excited, because uh, you can't celebrate 50 years of preaching without having some good preaching. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Some of God's best preachers up in here, and we have that in Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III, and uh, my friend uh, Reverend Atchison of the West Side Church. And so I'm excited uh, about those services, and we appreciate your support. If you want to do anything for me, just come and hear some good preaching, and I know God will bless you. Uh, as Sister Chris indicated, uh, that afternoon we will uh, have the West Side uh, Choir, and some of that choir at least will be here. And so I don't want them to bring more people than we have. So please, let's come and welcome our guests on that particular day. Amen. And, uh, we might be able to scrape together some punch and cookies or something afterwards, but let's, let's be here that day and just uh, make Bethany proud. Amen. Amen. Because whatever Bethany does, it must be the best. Um, you heard about birthdays, and I. Uh, I just saw the pride in Sister Chris's face when she was announcing that her husband was celebrating her birthday today, and we're so happy for him. Why don't you give God some praise? Uh, I was sharing with, with her. Uh, I told him if, if you ever had any doubts about your wife loving you, you don't have to doubt it. I was uh, visiting him in the hospital. He was praying for his survival. And uh, it was over some extended period, but every time I went to see him, uh, Bernadette Chris was right there by his bedside. And uh, she said, one time I got there, she wasn't there. I said, oh, she finally missed one. And then uh, I wasn't there long. She walked in, she had to go to the restroom, she had come back. <laughs> so, uh, so if there's ever any doubt that she loved us from Stan and Chris, uh, you can wipe that out your mind. She's crazy about that Negro. <laughs> We praise God for him. I'm glad to see him here. And not only did he survive, he is not just uh, surviving, he's thriving. And so we praise God. Amen. 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 I didn't know he and Lola were the twins, but we're glad to celebrate her birthday as well. She's not here. They probably celebrate uh, somewhere. Praise God for all of those persons who are celebrating a birthday this week. You say, Yo, son, is he here? No, but 
going to need service this master. Let your spirit have complete control. Speak through my mouth, Lord. Speak a word from your word. Allow that word to penetrate our hearts and trick our souls, Lord. Let it convict us, condemn us, change us, help us to become better persons than we used to be, better than we became here. Lord, we pray that you just touch our lives and help us to grow in your word and in your spirit. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will just have complete control, not just on Sunday, but control us every day of our lives. Lord, we want you to use us as walking demonstrations of your word. We are that way. Is our prayer. We ask these and many, many, many other blessings in the magnificent, mighty, majestic, marvelous name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. The saints of God say, Amen. I, I 
confess to you, when I read the text the first time many years ago, I was confused. For when he says, the spirit, the unclean spirit, goes out of a man, that's yeah. pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. When he says he walking through dry places, I didn't know if he was talking about the spirit or the man. Y'all missed it, y'all missed it. And so, you know, so we can be together and be straight. The evil spirit didn't just leave the man. The evil spirit was cast out of the man. I wish I had a witness here. The house is not a house. The man is the house. Right. Y'all better try to get that. The man is the house that the evil spirit was living in. Witness yeah, yeah. So when the man was cast out of the house, yeah. he's yeah. looking for somewhere else to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. That, that, that I'm trying to see that, that the, the parable really is dealing with the situation Jesus was dealing with himself. He had been casting out evil spirits, okay. and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes were accusing him of being a devil himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, chapter 12 is where they talk about sin against the Holy Ghost is the worst sin you can commit. Yeah, yeah. Because when you start giving credit to the devil, that which only God can do, right. you have committed an unforgivable sin. Yeah. Yeah. They got real quiet right there. Yeah. Don't get nervous. So all grief is unforgivable. Brother Ken is that is that is that the only person who can forgive you is the Holy Ghost. So you don't want to recognize him as being who he is. You in a mighty bad way. Well, look at the text. Look at the text. The Bible says when he's out of the man, he's in search of another place. He's looking for somewhere to rest. He's looking for somewhere. The hang out. He's looking for yeah, yeah. somewhere to go. Yeah. When the evil spirit is out of the man, the man is really in better shape than he was before. Yeah. 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 Because there is no evil spirit. Right. He's cleaned up. He's in better condition. He doesn't have to worry about the negative. He's got a, a clean slate. Nothing is really bothering him to try to put him in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah. But with that, with that situation also comes some new choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that brings about some new possibilities. Yes, sir, yes. You see, when Jesus cast out the evil, now you got to decide, do you want to stay clean? Or do you want to revert back to your old ways? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come to grips with the fact that, that before you didn't have a choice. Because you see, the, you, you, the evil spirit was present. He was controlling you. He was dominating you. And so there really wasn't a choice until Jesus cast the evil spirit out of you. Now when the evil spirit is gone, I got to decide, do I want to remain in this clean situation? Uh, will I allow myself to get back, uh, revert back to my old ways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a choice. I got a choice. Uh, that, that, that when you change, you can change for the better. But because you change for the better, don't mean all your problems are solved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well. I, I think I put it this way: it's like it's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, uh, they they uh, uh, really brag on themselves. They held themselves in high esteem because they had rid themselves of a whole lot of evil ways. Sort of like it's sort of like some of the Pharisees in our churches today that some people feel like their job is to tell people what's the what they should stop doing. <laughs> you, you need to stop drinking, you need to stop smoking, you need to stop lying, you need to stop fornicating, you need to stop uh, with your adulterous ways, you need to stop this, that, that, stop eating too much, stop lying too much, stop cussing too much. We always tell them what they should stop from doing. 
But you see, in order to make it through life, you got to do more for people than tell them what to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. 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 See, life consists of more than just not doing. It's not the question is not what you stop doing. The question is what you do. Yeah. 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 I'm still going to preach this thing. You see, it's not just a matter of stop doing bad. God wants to know what are you doing right. I don't need to know what you stop doing if you're not doing anything good. You see, when you were doing bad, you weren't doing anything good. And now that you stop doing bad, you still aren't doing anything good. So you're still no good to the Lord. You need to ask yourself, what am I doing to promote the kingdom of God? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. The evil spirit can be conquered, but the evil spirit can't be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. The evil spirit is restless and seek rest in dry places and find none. You see, an evil spirit can't function unless it has a body to function in. So when the spirit leaves one body, it automatically starts looking for another body. An evil spirit got to have a body in order to be able to get over it. That's a sermon right there. You gotta ask yourself, are you allowing evil spirits to use you? When he's out looking, will he look at you as being a possibility for indwelling you? That, that you got to be careful. You don't allow demons to use you to mess up something. I think I ought to tell you to do. Some folk got some evil ways about them, even though they claim they should. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know you can be saved and still let the devil call you to do some wicked stuff? Yeah, yeah. You can be saved and still let the devil make you do something you ain't got no business doing. You know, since you're looking all puzzled. The fact of the matter is, all of us have done some things we are ashamed of. And if you're not careful, if you're not on your guard, if you're not really on point, you can allow the devil to call you to misstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, I like that, I like that. Mister. See, he said, order my steps is what we want God to do. And it's not that God doesn't order your steps. Sometimes you don't follow the ooh. You don't follow the order step. <laughs> if I take ten, if I take ten good steps and take one wrong step, I still misstep. Come on here. You you see folk dancing and they, they're in rhythm. Everybody is, is symmetric, you know, when one left foot moves, the other left foot moves, and when one left foot is raised, the other left foot, and then you look all the way down the fact that they stood in a straight line. It looks like one person because everybody's moving symmetrically, everybody's moving according to the beat. But you know what? It doesn't take but one person to mess up. Yeah. <laughs> They could have been performing for 15 minutes. And Brother Clint, they won't forget, uh, won't remember rather the 14 minutes of right. All they gonna remember is the one, come on, misstep. Yeah. yeah, that's the way the devil messed with you. And he'll cause you to make a misstep, but you got to understand that, 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 that he's walking around looking, he's restless. He's trying to find somewhere he can dwell. He wants to find somewhere he can stay. You see, evil spirits, demons are not like us. They don't, they don't kill them. They don't burn out. They don't throw in the towel. They always want somewhere to mess up. Somewhere they can work. Somewhere they can contaminate. Somewhere they can discriminate. Somewhere they can depress somebody, pull somebody down. Somebody who's feeling good, they want to make them feel bad. Somebody who's positive, they want to make them negative. They're going around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom they may devour. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, as I heard to close, the next point is I see a canceled calmness. Calmness. When, he, when his evil spirit searches for somewhere to go and can't find somewhere to go, the Bible says the evil spirit goes back to the house they came from in the first place. Yeah, in other words, in other words, uh, when the evil spirit can't find somewhere else to go, can't find another body, it comes back to the old body they left in the, in the first place. 
They left, they left, they left, they left. Couldn't find the body, but they left the body, so they go back to the body. They left. They couldn't find a new body, so they returned to the old body. They couldn't find something new. You see, when Jesus cast the evil spirit out, that you got to be careful not to get too comfortable in your clean condition. See, you see, some of us want to use Jesus as a crutch. You use it when you want to. I noticed, I saw Brother Chris using that crutch he was walking. You see, he don't use it the same every time. He only leans on the crutch when he's trying to get some strength in the weak side. Y'all miss it, y'all miss it. Some of us don't need Jesus until we need him. And Jesus said, I'm not a needed kind of God. Because he casts demons out of you, don't mean the demons will stay out unless you take some effort, some preparation to make sure they don't return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the evil spirit came back, what did he find? The evil spirit, when he came back, he noticed that the house he left was changed. What was different with the house? First of all, he found it empty. He found it well swept. And garnished is another way to the Greek. It really means adorned. He found it empty, clean, and adorned. That's where he found it. He left it. He left it in disarray. But when he came back, he found out it was empty. I wish I had a witness here. Well swept. And it was adorned. I, I could just preach on that empty. You see, that's the problem is, is that, that a lot of folk brag on what you don't have. But what you have to really address is the empty part. You don't drink, but you empty. You don't smoke, but you empty. You don't go to the club, but you empty. Oh, yeah, ooh, I feel like preaching this thing. It's like good, man. It's good to me. If y'all ain't getting that. You see, we got too many Christians who brag about what they don't have, but you don't brag enough about what you. I wish I had a witness here. God don't need no empty Christians. That's why I say when you come to church, you ought to come to fill up. You got to not to party with the devil, but you need to learn how to party with somebody. You don't have to have the joy of the world, but you ought to have the joy of the law. You, you, you ought to have something that you didn't have before, that, that, that something ought to be replacing what you lost, that, that when you stop lying, you ought to have some truth. You ought to have a witness here. You, you want to, let me, let me give you a key. You want to, you want to learn how to get rid of your evil thoughts? You see, you see, the devil knows how to mess you up when you're sitting around trying to figure out how you're going to forget your evil thoughts. Because while you're sitting around trying to figure out what you're going to forget, you got to think about what you're supposed to forget before you can forget. You want to know how to forget your evil thoughts. If you got some evil thoughts, if pornography has messed up your mind and tied you up, and you can't think about what to do, you know what you can do? Just read God's Word. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up in the morning and just flow in the Word of God. Wake up in the morning and just you on the word of God. Wake up in the morning and say, I need a God. I need the word. David said, my, my word is a lamp unto my feet. You, you don't know where to go? He said, read God's word. And your word, God's word will tell you where to walk. Your word, his word will tell you how to talk and tell you how to live. You want to know when something else is on your mind, just read God's word. For blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of in the city of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night, and he, <laughs> he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth and fruit his seed. His leaves don't wither, and what shall they do is shall prosper. He will talk that not like that, but they like the chaff, which the wind driving away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand. Sin against God. You know what? God's word 
See you bragging on how good you are? Huh. That's like putting a welcome mat on the front of your doorstep. When the devil sees you bragging on how powerful you are, that's just like putting a doorbell saying, come on in. You got to be careful and understand that uh, you don't intimidate evil yeah, yeah. by showing him what's good in you. Yeah, yeah. Good to the devil is like a cafeteria is to a hungry man. Yeah. It's a full buffet. He says, well, you bragging about what you have, uh, you bragging about how clean you are, yeah. but really all you doing is showing me what I can mess up. Yeah. It's like you folks who have like to have pets. I never understood why somebody would want to take a pet and leave them in their house all day, knowing that the dog is going to tear up the sofa. The cat is going to scratch up the couch, going to mess up the furniture, and then got nerve enough to get mad at the dog. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. Well, one reason the dog is tearing up your sofa because he's not supposed to live on a sofa. Mm. But supposed to be outside in the first. That's another sign I ain't gonna touch it. But then you want to pay some money to train him to behave in a way unbecoming to a dog. You want him to go against his nature to do what he's nature to do and enable him to sit on your sofa like a human would sit on that sofa. And if you pay enough money and get the right trainer, he can do just that. Yeah. But you need to understand, when you first brought him to that house, he saw that sofa that was playtime. Yeah. That was something he could mess up. And so that's why the devil, when that spirit came in, he saw something he could mess up. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters, they didn't stop there. He said, when he saw that good condition, he wasn't satisfied to stay by himself. But he went and invited some cronies, some buddies, some running buddies. And he didn't just invite just anybody. He said he invited seven of them. Now again, don't get caught up on the number seven. Remember, seven is the complete number. Sometimes, sometimes seven can be more than seven. In other words, he invited enough folk to get the job done. Yeah. But let's read the resume. The resume said not only did he invite seven other wicked spirits, yeah. Yeah. but they were more wicked than he was. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. He wasn't inviting twins to come. He wasn't inviting people like him. He, were, he was inviting folk who were worse than he was. Yeah. 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 And he said when he invited them, they took over the house. And when they took over the house, the man that they are indwelling was more wicked than and worse off than he was before. Yeah. Let, let, let me do it step by step. First of all, he said he returned to the house. Yeah. Yeah. And when he returned, he stayed there. Yeah. Yeah. When he returned, he dwelt there. Yeah. You see, you don't run the devil off. He likes to hang around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talking bad about him won't run him away. He will hang around. Yeah. He stayed right there. He wouldn't move. He stayed there, but he wasn't satisfied staying there on his own. He decided to throw a party. Yeah. And if anybody know how to throw a party, yeah. the devil knows how to throw a party. Yeah. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Devil got some of y'all going to some of his parties. Yeah. He knows how to invite the evil at the party. Yeah. And you know, ain't nothing like a party with some evil in it. Yeah. I find my people don't go to late night parties to do right. Yeah. Y'all ain't listening to me. That's why they love the dark. Uh, yeah. You see, people don't like to do bad in the light. Yeah. They want to do evil in the dark. Yeah. Hoping somebody don't see them. That's why he took his mistress to a restaurant out of town. That's why he didn't sit under the light for the clean, but he went in a dark corner. Hoping and wishing that nobody would see him. That, that's how Negro can do evil and pray at the same time. He's in a corner with the wrong person, but he's praying nobody sees him. I wish I had 
please the Lord, know that anybody find me in this eating establishment. Do I have a witness here? Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, you have this evil party going on. But preacher, that sounds pretty bad. Jesus said, well, uh, that same situation, that, that wickedness, uh, that badness is the same state, uh, yes, that you'll find yourself in. Uh, yes, that even so, uh, it'll be unto you uh, this wicked generation. Whenever you shut God out, uh, you're going to find yourself uh, in a mighty bad way. Whenever you shut God out, you're going to find yourself being possessed by that which is evil. Uh, that was a mighty word right there. Uh, preacher, I thought the gospel is some good news. Uh, yes, I got some good news. I told you that clean can mess you up. Uh, but I haven't talked about Christ clean. Uh, oh, uh, if you dare to invite Jesus to come in. That's all Jesus was saying. Uh, you don't want to recognize me as being uh, who I am. But oh, uh, if you just invite me to come in. Uh, you want to call me a wine bibber and a beaver But oh, uh, if you knew who I really was. Uh, I am uh, the anointed one. I am uh, the son of God. I am uh, God's only begotten son. And if you will just uh, declare and let me come in, uh, I can come in, uh, yes, uh, and maintain your house. Uh, I can come in and not only cast the demons out, uh, but as soon uh, as Jesus enters in, uh, he puts a whole sign on the outside, uh, no vacancies. Uh, yes, uh, he cleans the house of evil, uh, but he don't have, he will not have vacancies uh, to allow any other evil uh, to enter that house. Uh, yes, uh, you need to understand when Jesus comes in, uh, there's a calmness uh, that you can have in your life. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. why I feel sorry for some of yeah. you. Uh, you think you all that in a bag of chips uh, and you can stop yourself from doing wrong. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, you're wasting your time uh, trying not to do wrong on your own. Uh, you're wasting your time uh, trying to keep God's law uh, under your own power and your own strength. Uh, I found out uh, if you really want uh, God to dominate your life, uh, you got to let his Holy Spirit come in. Uh, and once the Holy Spirit uh, moves in, uh, that's why I tell you, uh, the Spirit don't visit, uh, but he indwells. Uh, he moves in. Uh, never to leave again. Uh, he moves in uh, to be right there. Uh, he moves in to make a difference in your life. Uh, yeah, yeah. All people used to sing uh, in the church I was raised in. Uh, what a wonderful change in my life uh, has been wrought uh, since the years uh, came into my life. Uh, yes, uh, when he came into my heart. Uh, Joy in my soul, like a sea billow roll. When Jesus came into my life, he made a difference in my life. Is there anybody here that has let Jesus in? Y'all don't believe me. Well, when you let Jesus in, you don't have to worry about being hungry because he says, I am the bread of life. If you let him in, you don't have to worry about getting dark and depressed because he says, I am the light of the world. You don't have to worry about despair and depression messing you up because he says, I am the hope of the world. You don't have to worry about dying because he says, I am resurrection and I know how to raise you up when the devil thinks he's knocked you down. Is there a reason? Jesus, if you let Jesus come in, 
living now. I think I might need you down here, Christy. Come on down. Whatever your needs are, whatever your needs are. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. You're here today. While the blood is still running warm in your veins. God bless you, man. Glad to see you. Come on in, come on in, come on in. You got a seat right there. Is there another? There's another. Thank you. 
come and join with Bethany. Sister Rosa Jackson is requesting prayer for Clifford Bird, who is going on dialysis for his kidney, Amen. and also for the family of Minister Gaston, who passed away. Annie is requesting prayer for Reverend Freeman, who's having surgery on Monday, and also for her uncle Robert, who is also in the hospital. Amen. Let's pray for him as he goes into surgery. Who's that going to join the church now? Don Rick. Who's Don Rick? Thank you, Brother Scott. Appreciate what you did for the pastor, too. I don't care what you like, see. I mean, come on, man. Let me shake your hand. Come on. We're so grateful to have this young fellow come and just want to come and become a part of our church. <laughs> You're important to God. God has great plans for your life. I don't care what yesterday was. We're looking from today on to the future. And what God can do with you, what God will do in you, and the great things God will do. Um, tell him this man, because he loves you. God's got you. So just let the Lord get the glory from your life. Got to remember this class. Teach that class on Sunday mornings, 8, uh, 8 30, <laughs> in my office back there, in the office. But you come. Come there early enough, I'll, 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 I'll play attention. Right now, man, good time, ain't got nobody there. Now, when you do come, a lot of young women are going to come try to. <laughs> That's all right, don't worry about it. Right, right. yes. He's been married 33 years and they separated yesterday. Oh, oh don't say all. Oh. That's just a, that's a comma. That ain't the period. You don't know what God's going to do. Amen. God's going to fix that thing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. When you go home, you call that woman and tell her the pastor invited her to come to church. And we're going to straighten that stuff out. I don't care what you say, I don't need no detail. Just say, the Lord going to fix that thing. Tell her to come to church next Sunday. Amen. 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 I'm a member of this church. I want you, to, like I said before, we consider yourself as good a member, as, as important a member as anybody else. Let the Lord get the glory from your life. And just keep sharing the good news. And as the Lord pulls you in, you try to pull somebody else in. We need to grow this church. All of you in this space, you got to fill that stuff up. That's your, your, you and me got to fill it up. You know, we're not there in that section up there. You feel it. You and your brother feel it in that section up there. All right. Amen. God bless you. May God bless you. May God keep you. Now, to give God some praise. All right. Anybody else? Hello, Andy. When you're ready to have an operation? Monday. Monday? Let's pray for Dr. Freeman, y'all. I told Jose to call him. I forgot to call him. That might be why Jose is not here. Okay. Right. Young man came on Wednesday night. And need some help, and so we're trying to pray for it. Just call the name Jose. You don't even know what it's all about. Amen. Just call the name Jose and ask God to bless. Amen. And God can and will answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend. Oh, they're full of prayers. Lead us in this prayer as he prays outwardly. Let us all pray. Good Lord, thank you. Thank you.
a special way. Bless that you bless all of those requests that we have today. Yeah, yeah. Bless that you use us in the way that you see fit. Yeah. Any cups in here that's empty, we ask that you fill them up. Oh, yeah. And bless oh, us yeah. to leave them better than we can. Oh, yeah. Bless us to be able to tell the dying world that there's a reality. Yeah. And say that a true and a living God. Oh, yeah. And when it's all said and done, we want to hear you say, when you have done. Yeah, yeah.